Good afternoon. I am Rebecca with Augusta Locally Grown. I am the new executive director in this um, wonderful time of COVID and embracing local agriculture. Um, and I'm very excited to be talking to you guys today, even though you're not in the room, um, you are through the camera. And so I'm happy to connect with you this way. So a little bit about myself before we get started. Um, I'm not a local Augustian. Um, I am nine years living in Augusta but I am from a small town in South Louisiana um, that grew up around strawberry fields and sugarcane fields and whatnot and have a deep love of agriculture from the backyard garden that my family and I kind of fostered um, because we had to. We were a one income family. My dad is a business owner and we've been entrepreneurs for long lineages before then and just kind of grew up with the idea that um, food was necessary and that it was necessary for us to grow it um, on our own in our backyard in interesting ways. And so this afternoon, I'm here to talk about urban agriculture in Augusta. So obviously something that's been in my blood for many years. Um, and now I get to head it up in the beautiful town, the garden city that I live in. So. Um, being new to Augusta, I feel like I'm still new to Augusta when I talk to many of you who've been, you know, in and around the area for many years. Um, it took a little bit of research to see and to embrace um, what we're doing with Urban Act. And so now being new in this executive director role, I get to, I get to embrace it. I get to see the people who started it and know their stories. Um, so I just wanna share with you a little bit of where Augusta Locally Grown started. Um, years ago, about 12 to 13 years ago, um, a person named Jan Perry started the foundations of Augusta Locally Grown. And you could see these pockets of backyard growers in and around the Augusta area. And um, they would provide food and maybe sell to their neighbors or maybe not. And so Jan kind of took this idea on and started selling the produce and connecting with local farmers and whatnot. And then Kim Hines came on the scene. And you may know the name. Um, I know the name very well. Uh, but Kim Hines, um, the previous founder, pretty much, of Augusta Locally Grown, saw this and said, I think we can do this better. And so right off the bat, 12 years ago, back when the iPhone was first coming out and technology was still so new, um, said, you know, I think we can do this through a website. And that was the formation of the e-commerce movement that is now known as Augusta Locally Grown, um, where we found these pocket of backyard growers and said, hey, let's unite and do a food force. So what does urban ag look like today? Um, it varies, to be honest. Um, there's a backyard grower that I know and um, she's embraced old ways and new ways and she um, grows fruit trees and has a fruit tree oasis um, right next to her chickens and she used to grow meat rabbits and all of this was done um, in less than an acre and she could feed her family and she was able to sell online. And so you have that side of what urban ag could mean and could do. And then on the other hand, you go a little bit further out into Burke County with two acres, three acres or so, and there is a glorious pig farm, pig and chicken farm, and they raise their, their animals with um, beautiful ha animal husbandry techniques and whatnot. And so, um, you can have that side of things where there's these chicken tractors and pigs that are able to free range and it's really just a few acres of property. Um, and so you have kind of like a, a monoculture that's going on and then you also have diversity of what meat production can look like. So um, that's just kind of a picture of what 
we're looking at right now of urban ag, but it goes a little bit deeper because being in the position that I'm at at Augusta Locally Grown, I get the broad landscape of who sells through us, who is selling, who's not selling through us and what they're doing. Um, and so what I see now is you've got a lavender farm. That's again, not that many acres of property, but yet they're selling beautiful lavender for medicinal as well as aromatic, as well as culinary, um, right up the road in Deering. And then you have, um, oh goodness, you also have it where they're starting to connect with one another. And you can see that the person who raises cows, um, grass-fed beef, is now selling their bones or their meat to make um, dog treats and dog food. And so they're all connecting and you see this all come together. And this is what our modern face of, of urban ag in the CSRA looks like. All of this is going on um, almost behind the scenes because I'll talk to people and they'll say, oh, I don't know anything about Augusta Locally Grown or the face of urban ag in Augusta. Um, so again, you see all this beautiful interweb of connecting going on, but how does this come into play? And so now I'm gonna tell you a little story um, on a topic that we're probably familiar with and that is COVID. <laughs> and I almost hate to talk about COVID because that's all we're talking about now and that's all we're doing now. But to be honest, there's a beautiful side of COVID that is almost going untold because we don't have time or space to tell it. But I'm gonna tell a little bit to you guys today. So a few months ago, when I took the position of ED, of Augusta Locally Grown. The face of America was starting to change and adapt and close down. Um, and our sales over the past years um, from the community maybe not knowing or not truly embracing the local farmers um, had been dying down. And why does this matter? Well, it matters in a way that I'm gonna explain a little bit more in a second, but um, these farmers work multiple jobs to supply this food to us, to grow it, to grow in a way that's um, environmentally sound, to grow in a way that is nutrient dense for us in the community. And they give their time, they give their money. Um, many don't see a lot of um, financial success over this. And me coming from the small business background that I do, that bottom line matters a lot. I understand what it's like when you don't get a paycheck, when you buy chicken feed and you don't sell the amount of eggs or chicken um, to really cover those costs. And sometimes after, you know, the chicken flock gets inundated from foxes again, um, you say, why am I doing this? Well, there's a reason. So back to a few months ago, the world seemed like it was starting to shut down U.S. was next. Um, our sales were down still. Um, they, for the two locations for the online market, this is just the online portion of ALG, um, were down to probably being about 1,200 per week. So not a lot. Then you start hearing about food shortages and this whole supply chain starting to break down. You couldn't get certain things in the store. And then all of a sudden, within a week's time, people remembered that there is a food force right here in the CSRA. And word was getting around. I don't even know how word spread as fast, but we went from one week of doing 1,100 worth of sales to the next week, $9,000 worth of sales. And that was because the community said, that they knew they could rely on their local farmer because the local farmer, the urban farmer in Augusta is not miles away, it's right next door. It's the person that has the chickens in their background, in their backyard and you hear the rooster crowing um, 
in the one block setting and you see it. You see the person who turned their front yard into a front bed oasis of lettuce and kale. Um, all of a sudden overnight, we started embracing that and that was the new food chain and it kept going and it kept going. And at one point we had 14 grand worth of sales and had to keep going and going and pushing our farmers. And you know what? Not one meat producer had to up their prices because they already had things in place. They had local supplies. Um, they had local butchers that they could talk to and they knew how to raise up not only food for their homestead, but also um, how to raise up beautiful, nutritious products for you and your family as well. And so that's why this matters and it matters so much because all of a sudden we were able to support the food chain and we started getting attention from all over the state. Suddenly, I had local farmers markets that were calling me and saying, how do we do this? How do we do this? The community needs this. Um, and so we were able to be a force of wisdom during such an interesting time, but such a beautiful story. But it gets better because all of those farmers who are working multiple jobs, um, some still had their income that they could rely on and others were relying on income that may not be there. And so they were able to store up in their storeroom extra funds from the sales that they were getting to support themselves during these times. The community came out and not only did they buy products that were good for their family, but they helped out their neighbor. That's beautiful. It gets better. So many of our farmers um, happen to be of a certain age, I'll say. They are not quite as um, young as I am. And so they're a part of a population that really should be more careful and stay home. And so we had younger farmers that came out and they would bring their products to market or by being able to sell online, you could just do one delivery um, from a safe distance and be able to have a little bit of extra income come in um, when you weren't sure when your next check was gonna come. And it was all supported again, I keep saying it, by you, by the community. And it paints a beautiful picture of what is happening. Even during these times, we've seen our sales start to decline, which is good because at first we were seeing a lot of emergency buying and now we're seeing sustainable um, buying of products through the community who truly understands that that person who tilled up their whole front yard and you thought it looked crazy and you couldn't understand why they were growing kale, now all of a sudden you know why they're growing kale and it's beautiful. Um, and we're starting to learn techniques of how to prune our fruit trees and what will grow and not grow, how to grow potatoes in barrels. And our local food force, our local backyard farmer, is starting to team up and be able to teach these ways. Um, and what a glorious thing to come out of such an interesting time, as I keep hearing out in the, in the publics, um, is that what a time is this? So this is what we're doing. So, okay, COVID is gonna happen and COVID is going to go away eventually, hopefully. So what does this do for urban ag? Because we're still talking about urban ag in Augusta and the CSRA. Um, so how does this shape us and look for us in the future? Well, I already just kind of talked about it, where you have you know, your farmer neighbor who is teaching you how to grow potatoes and sweet potatoes, but now we also know better connections. We have kind of reformatted a different food force. We've learned that um, the landscape of Augusta has, on our, on our website, we have bread makers and we have suppliers who grind their own um, wheat and flour and pancake mix and you can get that. And so there's a different sort of um, food chain that's starting to, to line up. I should not say food chain, I should say more of like how we get our food. Um, 
that's starting to line up. We know where the eggs come from, but also we're starting to get different breeds come on board. Um, tons of quail eggs have just come upon us all of the sudden, um, which are delicious and they're so cute because they're really tiny. Um, and different breeds of corn are starting to, to see and to come on. And so you're starting to see, you know, more education on what you're eating, why you're eating it, and that there's other flavors available. So I can see this happen. Um, it's a part of my job to have a visionary mindset of not what's just going on now, but what will two years from now look like and how can we embrace that change. And this is the change that I'm seeing is um, a lot of local growing um, a lot more interesting urban ag in Augusta. So I'm excited. I hope that you guys are excited. Um, and I'm very grateful for this opportunity. So thank you. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Um, for somebody at home who, you know, doesn't have a green thumb and wants to know, they want to grow something, where do they start? So what's like, I don't know, the essentials that I would need to start growing. To something. start, um, all that you need is some soil. So grab a bag of soil from, from wherever and grab some seeds and see, oh, I like lettuce and I like peas and try it in your kitchen window and see what grows and see what you learn from there. And then from there you can branch out and you can do a little raised bed in your backyard and go from there. So you can start small with just a few dollars and then you can branch out and go from there. Tell us, tell us some of the benefits that not only helping with the local economy, but some of the benefits that stand out in your mind as far as going, buying more from a local farmer versus a larger corporate farmer. There's, um, there's different techniques that are used, honestly, when you're growing in sustainable methods um, on, um, I say, a smaller farm scale as opposed to larger farming scale. Um, the way that our larger agricultural products are grown are meant to grow big and fast. And, and when you do that, sometimes you compromise the, um, the nutrient density of a product um, you also can compromise your soil um, and the longevity of the soil. Um, you're kind of forcing nature to do something that maybe it wasn't meant to do. Um, and I say this carefully and cautiously because I understand, um, I call it big farming and what we do little farming, but I understand the need um, for big farming practices but I understand their heart behind it. And so I want to be careful to address that, but I also understand how we're able to do various other methods that are more sustainable and they're able to support your local economy as we've tested the model. Um, and also um, being someone who has an autoimmune disease, who has to rely upon, you know, getting every ounce of nutrient possible out of the meat that I eat, the, the bread, the, the lettuce, um, knowing that what's grown, how it's grown, and the measures of how it's grown matter um, so much with our health. So, yeah.